Let's go a little deeper into some of the clothing accessories we can wear to protect otherwise exposed skin from the sun when at high altitude. Hello again, everyone. I'm Jason. I did a short a while back in which I briefly went through a list of clothing accessories I bring on high altitude expeditions to guard, particularly my face, from harmful sun exposure. And I was asked if I could make a video that goes a bit deeper. First, we need to understand why UV is such a problem at altitude. Primarily, two things are going on. First, the lower air pressure means the molecules in the atmosphere are more spread out. That means less reflection of UV rays. For every 1,000 meters, UV levels increase by 10 to 12%. Second, when we are on high mountains, we have glacial ice, snow, or both to reflect the UV back up at us. I personally know several people who have burned the roofs of their mouths from breathing with their mouths open and having the sun bounce back at them from the ground. I've seen people in Talkeetna the jumping off point for most climbs of Denali, come back from the mountain with third degree burns to their noses and ears. So, we need to take sun protection seriously. For most of our body, we are going to have that covered with our normal clothing. But we need to pay special attention to our hands and faces. For hands, that's a relatively simple one. A liner glove is there not only to protect our skin from flash freezing in the cold, but also to protect us from the sun. I have never found a liner glove that is truly thin and dexterous, but also durable. It seems you get one characteristic or the other. For a more durable option, I have typically used Cirrus Hyperlite all-weather gloves. Now, this isn't really a true liner, it's more of a lightweight standalone glove, so you might lose dexterity and also need a bigger outer glove if you want to use it as a liner. For true liners, I've used Lafuma Silk 2 gloves, or Terramar Thermosilk liners, but they're bad at holding up. They will snag on Velcro, for instance. One expedition, and these are typically done. Our head, neck, and face, including our eyes, is our next focus. For our eyes, we need Category 4 level protection. That means only letting in between 3 and 8% of visible light. We need that level of protection to guard against snow blindness. That is when our corneas and conjunctiva get sunburned. And while it can clear up in a few days, it is very painful and leads to blurred or even temporary vision loss. So it can be a killer on a big peak. Besides dark lenses, we need to stop additional light from creeping in, which is why glacier glasses have side shields or blinders on the sides. I buy my glacier glasses with prescription lenses from Opticus, a local Colorado company who specializes in mountaineering eyewear through their own Altice brand frames or through Julbo frames. They have a myriad Category 4 lenses to choose from. Besides Julbo and Altice, many snow sports optics companies like Smith and the like will have options. Lately, I've been seeing people gravitating towards Ombras now that they have side shields. But from what I can see, their darkest lens currently allows in 11% of visible light, which would make it a Category 3 lens, not quite dark enough for the truly big peaks. Once we have our eyes protected, we have the rest of our face to worry about, Let's work our way from the glasses out. You can get nose guards with or without bottom shields. I personally find the bottom shields to be annoying as they tend to tickle my nose, so I don't use them. I need to be really diligent about getting sunscreen on the bottom of my nose then. I use nose guards from Biko. Biko also makes cheek protectors called Chicos that are integrated with the nose guard. Biko's cheek guards are designed to hang on the arms of my glasses. Many climbers, though, are using a guard that has a cord that goes behind your ears, made by Outer U, called the Face Glove. The fit is more stable than the Chico's, and many climbers swear by them. So, even with cheek guards, we still have to cover the lower part of our faces, and if you are like me, a beard really helps. But if not, then many will opt for a neck gaiter. I have one called a Buff, which is a brand name, and it is basically just a head-wide width tube of fabric. It can be tucked into our base layer to provide coverage around our neck. We can pull the hemline over our mouth and nose and then raise the back over our head to lock down our improvised face mask while also covering our ears. Buff calls out 12 ways to wear a neck gaiter, and there are probably more. I usually wear it at night, too, to keep my nose a little warmer when I sleep. I personally always take one to the high mountains due to that versatility. 
Another option is a heat exchange mask. Now, this isn't designed as sun protection. What it is designed to do is create a warmer and more humid environment around your nose and mouth to stop you from breathing in extremely cold and dry air. That helps stop our airways from getting inflamed and constricted, basically minimizes cold-induced asthma. I actually am asthmatic, so I wear one on the high peaks. I use a brand called Air Trim, and I use the number three racing filter, which provides the most airflow, but therefore also the least warming effect. Still, when panting at high altitude, airflow is pretty important, and I've noticed a very clear effect on my lungs when I am wearing it versus when I am not. The sun protection, as I mentioned, is an added benefit. No roof of the mouth sunburn. And it reaches my beard line, so I often don't need additional protection beyond this mask and my glacier glasses, at least for my face. Back to neck coverage. I don't always want the warmth that comes with the buff, so I also have the Outdoor Research Sun Runner Cap with removable neck cape. The cap is thin enough to fit under a climbing helmet, and I can wear the cape while still allowing some airflow. So, there's a system of various sun protection items I have been taking with me to high peaks for about a decade now. It gives me options to mix and match to help find the right balance between UV protection and temperature regulation. I have links in the description to my products of choice if you are interested. Of course, regular application of sunscreen and lip balm is part of the routine too. Every hour when I'm really high up there, but forgetting an application or being too busy climbing is much less of a problem when fabric is doing most of the work. Tell us some of your sun protection gear in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can watch a related cold mountain video on the sleep system I use for zero Fahrenheit or minus 18 Celsius conditions, or you can check out our entire gear playlist. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.